Hi everyone, my name is Chris Kennedy and I'm here to talk to you about D3 today. So a little bit of context here about how um, I arrived to this topic. So I was thinking about this presentation and as part of our project we're working on some code that basically automatically writes D3 code for you without you having to actually go into the JavaScript. And I was thinking, um, you know, how cool it would be to show you some of these advanced capabilities. But then I also thought, wouldn't it be even more awesome to show you the basics behind D3 and to have you code along with me and get you immersed into D3 as quickly as possible? I think that the power in that is that it allows you to dive into D3 and just come out of this 10 minute presentation saying, I know a little bit about this and I can learn more. Um, so I'm going to show you a little bit about the basics behind D3. And if you want to code along with me, uh, I sent out some of the basic snippets and data you might need to copy paste and everything else you should be able to follow along. So um, a little bit about D3 just before we start. This is going to be the intro to the basics of D3. And one thing worth knowing about D3 is that aside from JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, it also uses um, scalable vector graphics, which basically allows you to um, define shapes instead of specific sizes so that um, data points can be mapped to pixels and then be made scalable. So things will not get blurry as you make things bigger or smaller. They adjust as you might think that any sort of good graph would. Um, so with that being said, I'd like to just start out our exercise here. I'm going into JS bin and see there's, there's nothing here right now. You can start off with just an empty template. The first thing you'll want to do is you'll want to just make sure that you include the D3 library. So let's do that in here. Once we have that, we can forget about the HTML. We'll be working exclusively off of the JavaScript and the output. So the first thing you might want to do is uh, define the boundaries of the SVG element that you're going to want to um, create. And the way this works is with, um, with D3, you'll be modifying the DOM. So you're appending to the body this SVG element which will then serve as the foundation for everything else that you do with D3. So as we see here, we're setting the, the width and the height of the SVG element. And just to get us going with something simple, we have uh, the ability to write, uh, to create a triangle, for example, or a rectangle. <laughs> um, so we can create a rectangle and we can move it along based on these coordinates. So we're dynamically creating this data based on the numbers that we put in. So uh, to get a little bit more in depth into going to the charts here, aside from a rectangle, you can also create obviously circles and lots of other shapes. Um, here, instead of x and y coordinates, you're setting cx and cy because you're setting the center of the shape, right? the center of the circle. And the r being the radius of the shape of the circle that you're making. So you can also set the fill. So for example, you can make this blue, or you can make this red, or a variety of different colors. So all right, cool. This is basic D3, but now what? Up until now, everything that we're making here is arbitrary. There's no way that we can really put in data and have it draw these things out for us. We're just putting in numbers, really. So a key concept here for D3 is that you make use of scales to turn your data into pixels. What are scales? So scales allow you to um, put in basic data points, whatever they might be, and turn them into points and pixels. So you can set this domain of whatever your data might be. I might, might get data from 0 to 5, and the range of what you want that to be in pixels. So in this example, if you get a data point of 2, then the pixel point would be 200, right? The power of this is that you can have 
a data set with different data points and automatically they would be mapped as pixel points. So once we have this uh, scale in place, we can start modifying this with some basic data. I'm just going to put this array with one, two, three at the very top here. And um, we, can, we can start drawing circles. So instead of this one, I'm going to replace this circle here with this pretty little function. I'll walk you through what it does. So basically, it's grabbing, with SVG, you're grabbing all the circles, circle elements in SVG, then working with the data. Now, here's the funny part. At this point, circles don't yet exist within the SVG. Enter, the, f the enter function, allows you to dynamically append circles based on the data that it's coming in. So you see, at the point of selection, those circles don't exist yet. But the enter function allows you to put those in based on the data. And in this case, we're um, appending this to Again, arbitrary, hard-coded x, y, and r values. So at, at this point, what we would want to do is replace the x, for example. So OK, we have three data points. We have three circles on the screen. The problem is that they're all on top of each other, so you only see them as one. So if we replace the x coordinate, for example, with draw that up. So if you replace the hard-coded 50 value of the x-coordinate with um, let's see, so there's something wrong with my code here right now. Um, but basically, what we're trying to do is append the different circles based on what the scale will do. And here the issue is that the scale was not yet defined. So I'm moving the scale up, and we see three circles now. Why do we see, th see three circles? Because the x um, coordinates are now being dynamically changed based on the data points that are coming in. So what we want to do with this is we want to um, turn this into a function. So we'll leave it basically in the same structure, except it's now within this render function. So we can just render the data. So now we have a basic function that will draw in, um, draw in the data that you put in. Let's put in some more complicated data. So what I did here is I. Um, I'm going to replace this data with these uh, 10, 10 or 12 different products. They're basically headphones that have star average ratings, number of reviews, prices, basically things that you would find on Amazon. And what you want to do with this data is render it dynamically based on each of those attributes, right? Well, how do we get there? The first thing that we want to do is establish the axis scales. So instead of this one arbitrary scale that we have here, we want to replace this with x and y scales that would basically perform the same, um, the same function, but can now be defined separately. So once we have the scales for the x and y, we can also define what those x and y, um, what's going to be for uh, the value for x and y. In this case, the prices will be on the horizontal end, and the star average will be vertical. So now that we have these values defined, we want to go into this function and actually do something with these x and y values. So within our function here, we we'll want to add in the x and y scale domains so that we grab um, the data that's, uh, that's entered in the um, data array down here and turn it into a value that's scaled down to the pixel.
And at this point, um, what we want to do in order to make these circles dynamic based on the data is we want to replace these old hard scaled, you know, 50 or 20 values with functions that will actually return to you something based on scale. So at this point, we start seeing some basic data points, right? They're all drawn up. Um, it still looks a little bit crude, but the data's in there. So how can we make this graph better? Well, there's, there's two basic things that you can do. Um, the first one would be to have the size of the data points vary based on uh, some other parameter that you define. So let's have the value of the radius be defined by the number of reviews. The more reviews something has, the greater the radius of the circle. And based on this, we will also want to set a minimum and a maximum value for the radius. We don't want it to get too out of control large, that it takes over the whole screen, or too small, you can't see it. And just like we did for the x and y, we'll want to have a scale for the radius so that it converts those data points into pixel points. Now, inside of this function, we'll make use of the scale just like we did for the x and y for the r here. Basically, it grabs in the data, and it returns a scale down uh, value of that, um, of that radius. And finally, when we're entering our circles, we will want to have an attribute here that defines the radius. So now we have dynamically uh, sized radius based on the data, num the number of reviews that each item has. The last thing we'll want to do is um, do something with the brand. So we see here Sennheiser products, Bose products. Let's somehow differentiate them, and we can do that with color. So we can just establish that the color value will be the brand, just like the other parameters were set to star averages and prices. The color will be uh, based on the brand. and just like we did for the other steps, we'll want to have a scale for the colors. And we'll want to make sure that each time a circle is created, it has an attribute that sets the scaled color for, um, for this data. So at this point, within just 10 minutes, we were able to grab some form of data and turn it into dynamically sized data points within a graph. That's my presentation. All right. Um, questions? <laughs>